You're so very. Um, thank you very much. Thank each and every one of you. I, <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, I think I will turn on my camera for a brief moment to say that the first poem I'm going to read is from the book that was released during Women's History Month. I believe John F. McMullen has a copy of it, but let me turn on this just to be able to show for the people that are there. Shattering the Glass Ceiling is the name of the book. Yeah, I got a thumbs up from John. Um, anywho, I'm just going to share one poem from this book for you guys. And because it might freak out, I'm going to stop the video and the Zoom meeting. This poem is something that actually also has a uh, Farsi translation. Because, you know, I think it's important to have somebody from around, a friend of mine, translating stuff in this book. So this is a poem that he translated, one of them. And it's titled, A Man Calls a Woman. It starts with this quote from Bob Lamb from an essay in 1976 where he says, Every time a man calls a woman a bitch, the threat of rape lies behind his hostility. Every time a man calls a woman a witch, he reminds her of the slaughter of millions whose independence and medical knowledge threaten male dominance. Every time a man call, makes a joke about rape or wife beating, he issues a warning to women. Years later, this man actually contacted me. He's like, I've never had any of things from my essays put into a poem. This is amazing. <laughs> Anywho, this is the poem that I wrote called A Man Calls a Woman. Every time a man calls a woman a babe, he tells her he thinks of her as a child. Every time a man calls a woman a fox, he tells her she is to be treated like an animal. Every time a man calls a woman a honey, he tells her that she's meant to be consumed. Every time a man calls a woman a doll, he tells her she's something to be played with. Every time a man calls a woman a bag, he tells her she's something to be used. Every time a man calls a woman a slit, he tells her she's a body part, not a whole. Every time a man calls a woman a screw, he s all he's saying is what he'd do to her. Every time a man calls a woman a girl, he tells her that she can't think like an adult. Every time a man calls a woman a whore, he tells her that she is wrong for having sex. Every time a man calls a woman a lay, he tells her that she's no good on her feet. Every time a man calls a woman anything less than a woman, he tells her who's the boss. So, yes, we all know who the boss is, boys. You've done such a good job of telling us. <laughs> Thank you. I'm seeing applause on the thing. And I would show you the translation in Farsi, though if you go to it online, you would see a thing online that you can actually see it where it is written from right to left. And well, I could go on, but well, I, I'm not going to bother. Um, I, just to finish this off, I've got more, of course, written after the Roe v. Wade stuff. This first one, the last one is short and it's a good way to end it. This first one is called After All We've Accomplished. After the honor roll, after acceptance into the third best college in the country, after the dean's list, after the big city job that paid more than the men she dated, after battling for our lives, after piloting an airplane, after jumping out of an airplane, after swimming with sharks, after swimming in the southern ocean and camping close to the South Pole, after taking care of the home, after keeping finances in order, after raising the children, only after putting our lives on hold. After being a television star, after being a rock star, after being a movie star, after traveling the world to bring food and water to third world countries, after running for Congress, after being a senator, after being the Secretary of State, after holding a seat on the Supreme Court, after winning a Nobel Peace Prize from using my brain, after being the vice president, after running for presidency, after doing so much, after accomplishing so much, some bastards who know nothing of the plights of women try to decide they know what's best for a woman's private parts, they try to come along and strip us of our most basic rights, our right to our bodies, our right to choose. Haven't we fought this battle before? After all we've accomplished, what more do we have to do when religious conservatives believe we're worth less than something that's never lived? 
Why does the weaker sect choose to take away the rights of the sex who truly has the power to choose when to start life? <laughs> and really, why, we have been, why have we been so pigeonholed that we have to work again to prove to the ignorant that they're wrong? There's silence there, so you can't tell that was done, but it was done. <laughs> I'm gonna go and <laughs> there's one short one that is appropriate ending for this last piece, and it's called Flags at Half Man. It's perfect after traveling. After driving across the country, we passed a car dealership in Arkansas, U.S. flags at half mast. I wondered if there was a, another mass shooting, but no flags around. Oh, other flags around were lowered. As we drove toward the next town, we wondered if the flags were at half mast because of the recent overturning of Roe v. Wade and the death of women's rights. Okay, I'm gonna video it for a second and thank each and every one of you so very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for everything. We keep working, we keep fighting, we will figure things out as we go along. I don't have a phone to see when the first uh, Sunday in August is, but I will be there. Um, I believe, I you look up the date. I will send notes and you guys will all know about it and you'll get emails and Facebook messages and everything. But I wanted to yes, thank you. to let us know. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll so be super vigilant. I promise I will, I will. But I will mute myself in case I go bad again for you or I'll stop the video anyway. Um, thank each Trust and every me. one of you. Thank each and every one of you for being here. Thank you so very much. Thanks for holding on and sticking through. And thanks for all of your poetry. And thanks for all of your music. And thanks for all of your input. And you are all so very. You're all so very. Yes, we are. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you in the beginning of August. Thank you again to John McMullen for thanks setting for up this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're triple plus awesome. I don't know the time, but you're... Also, double plus worth it, my darlings, and and you're also Absolutely. very and thank you so very much, uh, John. Again, thank you very much. Michael, is that, is that your work? Are you are you like a Picasso kind of guy? Or is that is that oh, your? Oh, yeah. the artwork behind you. Uh, so that's I don't your style? paint anymore. I, I quit painting in like 2015 and just focus on my oh. writing. Uh, yeah, I used, used to paint. Oh, thank you. The photos behind me are all of things from water from where we've been over the years. Have a wonderful July. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Senator. Every one of you. Thank you all so very much. Thank you.